just behind me in the Magic Kingdom is the Buca de Beppo of Walt Disney World. I'm talking Tony's Town Square restaurant. And we call it the And actually, I, I take that back. It's definitely not the Buca de Beppo. Uh, it's not fun to say. Do you like the Buca de Beppo? I don't, I, even at Buca de Beppo, I think once in my life, it was at Universal City Walk. I was like, can we please eat somewhere unique that's not, you know, close, yeah, close around Hollywood, something. And it's like, we're going to Buca de Beppo. And I said, fan freaking tastic. <laughs> so uh, let's scratch all this. Let's start over. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Disney dining review. I'm Craig. I'm joined here at Magic Kingdom with Rhino and Hannah, and today we're eating at Tony's Town Square Restaurant. It's a restaurant that the Diz has not been kind to over the years, but we're a different kind of Diz now, so maybe we will enjoy it a little bit more. I have low expectations going in. I know it's gonna be overpriced Italian food, but hey, you know what? Maybe it'll be great. We'll see how that goes. Before we go though, I wanna remind you, this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, you wanna support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free no obligation quote. And also a reminder that this content is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. If you want to help us out, head over to patreon.com slash disunlimited and get more information there about how you can become a Patreon supporter. Uh, there's exclusive content that you can only get there from members of our Diz team. So again, patreon.com slash Diz Unlimited. Uh, now that I have said all that, I think it's time to go do our worst Italian impressions impressions as we uh, eat our way through Tony's Down the Square Restaurant. That's a spicy spaghetti meatball. We are seated out here on the patio area. I don't know if that's the word they use for it. And we call it a It's the outside part of Tony's, a restaurant that I have not stepped foot into until today. So this is a big, this is a big deal for me. This is one of those like, uh, check. Last year we did uh, we did uh, Cinderella's Royal Table. That was a check mark here, and I, I've never been here. And now I'm gonna have to go to the Plaza because that's another one I've never been in. But um, so I'm very excited to be here today. And um, we ordered some appetizers out here on this sunny Florida day. We went with the Tony's garlic bread for the table. That's thirteen dollars, and that is toasted ciabatta with roasted garlic butter and Parmesan fonduta. I don't know what funduta is, but it 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 sure is going to be some fun. Yes. Duta. Um, and then we also got the fried mozzarella for fifteen dollars, which is served with a spicy, creamy tomato sauce. And we also got the insalata caprice, twelve dollars. This is an heirloom tomatoes and fresh mozzarella topped with arugula and white balsamic pesto. I'm going to rank these. I think the uh, Tony's garlic bread for the table was easily number one for me. I honestly, honestly, God, I'd order another one right now if I wasn't like, oh, we're gonna fill up on bread. But I, I, I thought this was very, very good. It, it was came all cute, stacked up, and then you got to pour the sauce over, which Hannah got to do in her fun uh, Vanna White sort of slow motion, yeah, uh, action. And, <laughs> and there's that. I don't know if you heard that, but if you didn't, you didn't. Um, um, I like that, and then for me, the next one down would be the Ensalada Caprice. Uh, Caprice, I don't know how to say it. Caprice? Some people say Caprese, I some people know. say Caprice. I, I don't know. You can tell me how, how you need to know. I'm from Massachusetts, so I'm sure I say everything wrong. But these were like giant like beefsteak tomatoes, really thick tomatoes, but they were very fresh. Um, and uh, I like them. I, I, this is one of those things where I, I feel like I want to say you can't go wrong, but I have had bad versions of this before. But I did enjoy it. I thought uh, there was like like having that really big, really thick uh, tomato on there added a lot of um, value to it. I want to say because it was kind of like uh, like Craig and I split the last one, and I, I'm like I enjoyed it, but it was it was it was a lot. It was like hefty. Um, but. I, I like that. Um, the fried mozzarella too. I have never seen mozzarella sticks so big before in my life. There were two giant mozzarella sticks, um, thick babies. And uh, I'm not really like a mozzarella stick kind of a person, but I enjoyed these. I thought they were they were pretty good. They were very, um, 
the thing with mean mozzarella sticks, I feel like if you don't eat them the second they come out of that fryer, I feel like they lose kind of um, that uh, like gimmick or thing about them. Like you want that cheese to still be kind of gooey. And the way we do everything, it, it kind of solidified a little bit. But I will say, even when it was like here, we'd been eating for a while and it was on the table and I had the last bite that was still the cheese had become solid at this point. It was still pretty good. Honestly, um, our server described that sauce as spicy, and I would not agree with that whatsoever. Um, but I did like the vodka sauce that it was with. Um, so all in all, actually, I really, I, I liked all three of the appetizers. So for me, I'm off to a great start at this restaurant that I've never been to. Guys, I am so full right now. I just carb loaded on all these apps. I could come back and just eat appetizers. I thought they were equally pretty good. I'm very full right now. It is the last week of the Country Bear Jamboree as we know it. So I'm planning to go enjoy that after this. As much as I love Country Bears, I'm worried I'm gonna fall asleep because just so many carbs. But anyways, I would rank my ranking for the apps today. I would put the Tony's bread for the table is number one. And I have to be honest, when I saw this on the menu, I thought bread for the table, $13. I wasn't going to get it. Right. I was like, I normally wouldn't have gotten that because it seemed expensive. And also it's just bread. What I missed in the description is that it also came with that delicious, what did they call it? The fun, uh, let's see here. Fonduta. Fonduta. Well, I'm pretty sure it was Alfredo sauce, and I ain't mad about it. I loved it. In fact, I even took one of the uh, mozzarella sticks and dipped it in it, and it was delicious. That is actually, so that's my number one. I would come back and get that. It is absolutely shareable. It was huge. I thought it was great. My number two would be the mozzarella sticks, because I am I just love cheese. It's one of my favorite things. It's just how can you go wrong? I will say I have had better mozzarella sticks, but they are definitely up there. So they are larger. I've, I've seen bigger mozzarella sticks, okay? But <laughs> I, so what I would have liked though with the mozzarella sticks is the spicy creamy tomato sauce that was with it. Presentation was great, but that was the base. And then they put the mozzarella sticks on top. I wish that actually would have come on the side because I feel like I didn't get enough of it. And especially when you're sharing it with a table of people, it's kind of awkward to like get your mozzarella yeah. stick and then swirl it around on the dish afterwards. So it that didn't was, stop you. It did not, no. and it won't again. So I was still ranked at number two, but that would make me happy. And then the, I'm just gonna call it the Caprese. I thought, um, I thought it was good. Uh, I thought the mozzarella was, it was soft enough. It was not chewy, fake mozzarella, I guess let's call it. I love an heirloom tomato. I love tomatoes actually in general. That's like one of my things. I thought it was very good, except for, I feel like maybe, I don't know if it needed more of the pesto or maybe a little bit more salt and pepper. There was just a little bit of a flavor element missing. And I think the portions of the other appetizers, I mean, the portion of that one was good too, but the other portions were just huge and very shareable. But really, I could honestly see myself coming back and just ordering those three. You know, maybe sitting here watching the parade. I think that's a good value. So, so far I am pleasantly surprised. I haven't been to Tony since, I want to say 2020, 2021, and this is already very different than my last memory of Tony. So I'm happy. I just got to like really psych myself up for my main portion. So here we go. My ranking is going to be the exact same as Hannah's. Yeah. I thought above and beyond the garlic bread for the table was incredible. And yeah, it is slightly overpriced when like you think about it, if you go to a grocery store, buy that that log of garlic toast and cut it into, you know, if, if you cut one of those long ones in half, that's probably what we got. But with the presentation of it, with the sauce, I, I thought this was incredible and I would get it again in a heartbeat, which your heart might not do for too long if you keep eating the garlic bread for the table. Uh, then after that, the fried mozzarella. This is a tough one. Like, I... It is very close between the mozzarella and the caprese for me, but the mozzarella is slightly edged it out because you can never go wrong with fried cheese sticks. Uh, my only issue with these ones were that uh, the the cheese was starting to come out of the actual logs, which usually that means it was slightly overcooked. I mean, 
mozzarella sticks, as, as much as they seem like something that is very simple, there is a fine line between like underdoing it and not getting the melty cheese on the inside, but then overdoing it and all of the, the cheese comes out. So I felt like these were slightly overdone, but you know, I still, I still enjoyed it. I just needed more of the sauce. And then last but not least, the caprese salad. Uh, it was fresh in terms of like the tomatoes, those big heirloom tomatoes, but the mozzarella was only fresh by name. Like they're not making this mozzarella in house. This was, this like felt when I make caprese salad at home and I buy the, the logs. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The, the long logs at Publix and you just slice them yourself. And not that that's bad, but it just, it lacked that freshness that you would get from actual fresh mozzarella at a, at a fancier Italian restaurant. So yeah, I, it wasn't the greatest, but it wasn't the worst. And then it had like the white balsamic on top of it. I think I would have preferred just a more hearty balsamic, a little bit more earthy, kind of add a little bit more pop to it, but it wasn't bad. And uh, all of our all of our appetizers were very shareable, so that's a great thing. Uh, besides those, they also have a house salad and a Caesar salad and a seasonal soup. And right now the seasonal soup is Italian wedding soup, which that is one of my absolute favorite soups, if not my favorite soup. So it was tough not getting it, but we wanted to go the shareable route. I'm happy we did it. I will come back for the soup eventually. Nope. The tra my train's leaving. Time to go. I'm being told that all restaurants at Magic Kingdom now serve alcoholic beverages, which is I don't dine here that often. So I thought that was true, and it's been confirmed off camera. So uh, Tony's is no different because it is a sit-down restaurant. They have three um, specialty cocktails. They also have wine and beer as well. But I went with the Little Italy cocktail, which is $17. It is Knob Creek Rye Whiskey with Amaro and Sweet Vermouth garnished with Luxardo Cherry. So it's it's a Manhattan, basically, with Amaro in it. Um, it was okay. I feel like for $17, when I make a Manhattan at my house, it is two ounces of bourbon. Um, it's a 212 because that is the area code for um, Manhattan. That's how I remember, or that's how I like to make it. So two ounces of bourbon, one ounce of vermouth, and then I'll do two dashes of like bitters in it or something like that. Um, but uh, that's, everybody makes it different, whatever. But here they were definitely like, I don't even know what the measure of the pour of the alcohol was, but I don't even think there was two ounces in that glass. So it was a very expensive cocktail that I wasn't like in love with. I don't love Amaro, but I do like Manhattans. And I use like um, Campari and um, other kind of bitter liqueurs in drinks lately. I've been trying to do that. Um, Aperol, stuff like that. But, um, you know, I was thinking as we were ranking all of the appetizers, I was like, actually, what, what Hannah had said about getting just those and like kind of sitting and enjoying yourself and then having cocktails here would be a really nice way to experience this. But my only problem is I don't think I got a $17 yes. worth cocktail. Like if this had been priced um, a little bit lower, maybe like 14 even, um, I would definitely be like, sure. Uh, but I feel like it's a little pricey for what I got. Hello, it's Martini Mom reporting here from the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> I'm like, fun uncle, but less fun. So today at the Magic Kingdom, which by the way, to your point right now, I am still not used to the fact that you can have wine, beer, cocktails at the Magic Kingdom. That is just mind blowing to me. In but face. <laughs> here we are. So I had the limoncello sidecar. I do typically like limoncello and when in Rome at Tony's, and it comes with limoncello liqueur, uh, Cointreau liqueur, and then an Applejack brandy and lemon juice. I feel like the serving size was a little small. This is $16. Um, it was very tart. It is lemon, so here, here. It does have a sugar rim, which I enjoyed. Again, just like Rhino said, I feel like the value for this one was not fantastic. And I do wish it was one of those places, because I love the appetizer so much, that you could come and get a great cocktail and just have appetizers, appetizers and enjoy Main Street and the parade. So that was a little disappointing. I don't think I would order this again. Speaking of, you mentioned Aperol. This would be a great place to have an Aperol spritz, which I think you really can't go wrong with. So I feel like that would be a great addition to this cocktail menu. But I mean, you know, all in all, how fun is it that I'm drinking a limoncello on Main Street, but I won't do it again. Cheers. For my entree today, 
I went with the uh, tortellini al forno, which is a Calabrian chili and cheese tortellini baked with Italian sausages, onions, peppers, and mozzarella and a creamy tomato sauce, all for $28. It came out in a cute little metal tin with a giant heaping portion of arugula on the side, which is fine because I love arugula. So what I would do is take one dip of the tortellini, put it in the arugula, and then into my old old kisser it went. Um, I thought it was okay. Like at first eating, I was like, it, 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 I felt like the sauce was a little more, I know it says a creamy tomato sauce. Definitely was a little more vodka sauce for me, which is fine because I that's my favorite. Um, is that what a creamy tomato sauce is? Say how you described it. Oh, I when I first had it, I said, this tastes a little bit, it's very reminiscent of Chef Boyardee. Um, which, I, which then Craig asked me, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And I said, I don't know yet, because I still have fond memories of that as a child, specifically the raviolis. Um, but um, once our server, Nicole, brought us over our, um, our little uh, Parmesan and the um, red pepper, the crushed red pepper, that for me, that was where I was like, this was pretty good. I liked it. The Italian sausage in there was pretty good. It added a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra something to it. I would say when it says onions and peppers and the chili, I don't know that I really got a lot of those. There was a couple of the pepper in it, like one or two I got, like a little bit in it. So, um, but I was happy. I know mine was definitely the smallest of the portion sizes, I think, on the table maybe. Um, you know, and for $28 for Italian food, you're like, mm, that's a lot of money. But um, I didn't dislike it. I enjoyed it, honestly. I, I actually, I liked it. I think the more I'm sitting here and thinking about it, it's like, it was pretty good. Yeah, once that, once that crushed red pepper was in it, and it gave me that little bit of extra spice that I wanted, that's where I was like, okay, this is pretty good. I had the rigatoni olive vodka, and I got this because this is kind of a comfort dish for me. This is one of those that I make at home that's kind of in constant rotation. I usually add Italian sausage to it, and I feel like I should have asked for that with this dish. We saw someone else that had Italian sausage in theirs, and I think that was the right call. The suggested meats I could have added to it were chicken or shrimp, and I just didn't, I just didn't feel like I wanted those, and I was afraid it would just be like a chicken breasts and then pasta. Meh. Uh, so it's, I'm gonna give you a description, is rigatoni tossed in a classic tomato, vo tomato vodka sauce topped with Parmesan herb breadcrumbs. And this cost $24. I, it was the biggest portion. I barely made a dent in it, but also I did eat enough appetizers for three people. What'd you say? Al dente. Al dente. It was served al, I, it was no, al dente. No, no, I meant like you barely made an al dente. Oh, ba -da -ba. I killed the joke, I'm sorry. So I barely made an al dente. But uh, I will say the sauce itself was, it was kind of in between. Like I feel like it wasn't super creamy, but it, like Rhino said, the spice really wasn't there. So I didn't add any crushed red pepper, but I feel like it would have benefited from just a little bit of spice, a little something extra. I also think it would have been maybe better in Rhino's dish where it was maybe more of like a baked pasta so the the cheese and the breadcrumbs on top could have created a crust i feel like that would have been a positive addition um yeah i'm just so full. i mean literally i'm trying to stop from burping right now I'm, I'm not even kidding uh so i think all in all it's about what i expected but would i order it again maybe i don't think i would come back here specifically for that i think i'm still more impressed by the appetizer so far I asked our server what the most popular dish was here at Tony's Town Square restaurant, and she promptly replied, the chicken parmesan. And I said, is that a, like, a thick chicken breast that's been coated and fried and all that? Or has it been, like, pounded very thin and takes up, like, a, an entire plate? And she promptly responded, it is a big, thick piece of chicken breast, and I said, no, thank you. That is not how you make chicken parm. That's not how chicken parm should ever be made or served. I don't want that. Give me thin chicken parm for life. So I avoided that. Uh, she then said the next uh, most popular thing was I maybe the tortellini, I want to say, that Rhino got. And then right after that, she was like, the spaghetti and meatballs. So I went with spaghetti and meatballs. These are house-made beef and pork meatballs served over spaghetti with Tony's marinara sauce for $27. There's also a version you can get of this with impossible meatballs, but usually impossible meatballs are just 
they, they don't work well with me. So I, I went for the real deal. And this was not awful. The pasta was al dente, and I put a big al dente in it. You're welcome, Rhino. Uh, the, the meatballs actually were, I was happy with them. I, I didn't think they were, you know, as, as great as some of the other meatballs I've had in the world, but they definitely were better than, like, a frozen bag of meatballs. Uh, the sauce is, it's better than, like, it's better than other sauces I've had. It wasn't sweet by any means, but it also was kind of lacking uh, a flavor that, uh, I, I don't know, felt a little bit a little bit more elevated, so I would have probably added more like herbs, just gave it something to, to spice it up a little bit more. So I really had to, to rely on the Parmesan cheese on the side as well as, uh, as, well as crushed red pepper. So I, I was able to get it to the point that I was happy eating it. It was a decent sized portion uh, for $27 just absolutely ridiculous i i feel like in our situation since we're out on the patio we paid for the view for these prices but if you're stuck in by the fountain or in any of the other rooms you're looking at this like how do they get off selling pasta and selling like everything they have on this menu starting at 24 dollars and going up to 31 just not not there it's mama melrose was a lot better in terms of the quality but hey Maybe it'll get better with dessert. For our dessert, there are four dessert options, um, one of which that we didn't get, which was the gelato, um, which is ask your server for today's daily specials. Um, that is $7.75, and Craig asked, and um, they were the exotic flavors of vanilla or chocolate. So um, we went with the other three desserts on the menu, which included the tiramisu cannoli for $9.50, which is a house-made filling with hints of espresso, chocolate, and Mars Capone cheese. Uh, there was the Italian strawberry shortcake for $9, which is vanilla cake with whipped topping, balsamic marinated strawberries, and fresh basil, and then Tony's Spumoni tart, which is $9.50 for a flourless chocolate cake, pistachio cream, and dark cherry mousse. I feel like that description of this is not correct because I would argue there was not a pistachio cream. Uh, if, if you if you would permit me for one moment, please, I would like to show you. For those of you watching, there is a green. It's definitely like baked in there. That's not a cream. That's part of the cake. So um, I don't really feel like there was a cream in there. But if I were to rank them, one, two, and three, one being my favorite, I would I would say that I think I actually did like the Spumoni tart the best. I liked the strawberry shortcake after that, and then I liked the cannoli. Uh, only, the only reason for that is that I am not a big uh, coffee espresso drinker, and so um, like I, it, it wasn't gonna be for me either way, but um, now reading this where it says Mars Capone cheese, that makes a lot more sense why the filling I thought was really light as opposed to I guess what I'm used to. I don't eat a lot of cannolis, but I find that um, sometimes they're, they're um, their, their filling is usually a little more dense, so that's why I was like, oh, this one's a little lighter, you know? And um, so I did like that. But um, what did I say? Tony Spumoni tart was, I think, was my, I like said was my favorite, but yeah. for me, it is one of those where I still, I don't want in love with any of the desserts. Um, I felt like it had on the top of it a little, um, uh, my God, what is it called? Yeah. You just said it to me. It, the, brittle. the brittle. It had a little bit of like a, um, sort of like a nutty brittle on top, which was good all by itself. And then it had the jiggly dome of the cherry and then the chocolate tart with this pistachio baked in. And my problem is, is that I felt like the brittle, that flavor, if you tried the all in one bite, the brittle overtakes it all. But then if you tried it without the brittle, the chocolate overtakes it all. And I tried to just get pistachio by itself and I couldn't, I couldn't really taste the pistachio, and I am somebody who is filthy in love with pistachio. So I love when it's like insane flavor pistachio. In fact, last night I had pistachio ice cream for dessert. So um, this was not it. And then when it came to the vanilla, the, the Italian strawberry shortcake for me, I thought the cake was good, like the cake was well made, but it's just a vanilla cake. Um, and I didn't really get the balsamic marinade on the strawberries um, and stuff. So it was kind of like a weird choice, I felt like. so. Not, not in love with any of the desserts, that's what I would say. Still stick with the appetizers, I think. 
So for the desserts, I will say I probably wouldn't have normally ordered desserts here just because none of them really called out to me. And, you know, desserts at Disney in a table service restaurant are a little bit more expensive. So even though I actually like cannolis for $9.50, I would almost rather just go get something from the confectionery or a Dole Whip or something like that. So I will rank the cannoli as number one. However, I really wish that I could have had a regular cannoli and tiramisu because I love tiramisu. So a solid tiramisu dish, I probably would have ordered by itself. I felt like the espresso really came through and that is what I really enjoyed about it. The actual, um, I don't know what we call it, but the cake part of the cannoli, what is, I don't know, the crust. cookie, the crust, yeah, yeah. that part of it, I thought was okay, like it had a little bit of crunch, but at times like almost felt maybe a little stale, I could have been in my head about that, but that was definitely, I mean, I would say my favorite. Uh, number two, I'm going to rank the the tart, just because I, I it was confusing flavor, I again, I wish they would have gone with a more traditional version. Of this dessert and I thought that would have been good but I thought you know it was it was interesting it was different um, I didn't get any of that pistachio cream flavor just like Rhino mentioned um, but that one is a little bit more shareable than a cannoli I guess you could say and then the Italian strawberry shortcake I, th I think I'm gonna score this number three not because it wasn't good but maybe more because you can get the best shortcake at Fort Wilderness at Hooky Doo. So having shortcake anywhere else at Walt Disney World just feels wrong and this one was definitely subpar I would say compared to that one. I was actually excited about the fact that it was balsamic marinated strawberries and it had fresh basil. Like strawberry and basil is a delicious combination. The problem is I just didn't really get much of that so then it just was an okay strawberry shortcake. The presentation on all these desserts I felt like was, you know, pretty nice. Yeah. Nothing special, or I shouldn't, shouldn't say nothing special. Nothing extraordinary, but the strawberry shortcake, they did put a little extra care into it. But yeah, I would, again, just like Rhino said, if I was here, again, I would pick an appetizer before I picked a dessert. Splurge on the appetizers. My choice for number one is mm -hmm. absolutely the tiramisu cannoli. I would have just ordered this by itself and not bothered with the other two because I love cannolis, I love tiramisu, blend them together and maybe you got the best of both worlds, Miley. Uh, and honestly, when it says hints of espresso, that is very much an understatement. It was an espresso cannoli, but I, I dug it. Uh, the kind of Hannah mentioned, like it didn't necessarily feel fresh. And I think that's probably because uh, they pre-batched these and they were sitting in the fridge and kind of, you know, the, the, the cannoli filling started to get into that crust and soggy it up a little bit, kind of take away the freshness. Uh, that's just a guess though. I'm not, I'm not positive on that. Uh, then after that, I would say the Italian strawberry shortcake, the strawberries were fresh. They weren't in any syrup at all. Uh, if you ate the strawberries without any of the whipped topping or cake in it, you could taste the balsamic, but very light. The whipped topping felt fresh, uh, not overly sweet. And the vanilla cake, you know, it's, it is a solid vanilla cake, but wasn't a lot there. I don't know. Once you blended it all together, it just felt like there wasn't one flavor that was trying to dominate or stand out. And I wish there would have been a pop of something, but uh, the strawberries were fresh. Uh, finally, at the end, Tony Spumoni tart. This thing was terrible. And I don't know what Rhino was tasting in it that just caught his fancy so much, but I never want to have this again. I just did not care for it at all. Right now, for some reason, I feel like Disney is on a, a big tart kick. Like they went through their cupcake phase for years and years, and now this is this has to be like the third or fourth tart that we've had in like this past four or five months because we had we had the one at uh, the Mara that I ordered that was literally the exact same thing tart then a mousse and then a topping. And then I think we had two different ones of those during the holiday season. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's what, it, we had it as a reindeer and I think we had it one more as like a snowman yeah. or something. And now here, so clearly that's just, someone came up with this idea and they're just trying to say, how many times can we use it over and over again? And 
I feel like it's worked less than it's actually, it's worked well less than, uh, less than they need for, for a good uh, batting percentage there. I just, I, I, did, I did not care for it at all. I wish they would try to do something different with it. I just, I, I have more to say about how much I disliked it, and I'm trying to just sit here and decide if I should keep going or if I should should back off with it, but I, I'm going to back off, and the last thing I'm going to say is, you know, $9.50, $9.50, $9, to me, each one of these three desserts was what you would expect at a quick service restaurant here on property, especially that Spumoni tart, because I know that's where you had it, so to me, these were all probably overpriced by about $3 compared to if you would get them at a resort quick service or at a uh, you know during a special event like mickey's so definitely on the steep side and not not necessarily creative enough but i would have the tiramisu cannoli again the time has come for our rankings and the numbers are in um so for ambiance i have it as like a four because we didn't ask to, but we did get seated out on the patio, which was actually pretty nice because we ended up like seeing the parade from here, but I don't really like this parade, so <laughs> I, I didn't really care either way. For somebody who had never been to the restaurant, I thought maybe it would have been cool to kind of be inside of the restaurant, but I, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't bad. If it was any warmer than it is today, I'd be uncomfortable because right now I'm starting to get really sweaty. Um, so I only give it a four because there is no real ambiance out here. You're just like eating in the park. Um, and for food prep preparation and presentation, I gave it like a seven. I thought everything that came out was pretty, like served well. I mean, I, specifically our, like our, that bread. I will not get over bread. the bread. Um, but you know, one of those where I was like, it's not, it wasn't the, like, you know, spaghetti meatballs. How low can you make it? It still looked good though. So I give it a, a solid seven. Um, and then um, the quality of taste, I definitely give a seven as well for me because I liked my, I, I like I said, I really enjoyed the, um, the Italian bread for the table. Italian bread, what the hell? <laughs> Tony's garlic bread for the table is what I meant. Um, I really liked that, and I think I'll be thinking about that one for a while. And then, honestly, I, like I said in my when I was talking about my meal, I was like, once I get red paper got in it, and I've been sitting here for a while. Yeah, I said it weird. Um, <laughs> I've been uh, like thinking where I'm like, you know what? That was actually pretty good too. I enjoyed that. So the only one where I feel like I ding it is like the desserts just aren't super exciting and stuff. But and my cocktail was only like okay, so. Um, for service, I'm giving it an eight and a half. Nicole was great, our server. Um, I get the ding in there because whoever was the food runner, that guy, uh, what do they call it in, in medical things? Had no bedside manner. Um, food's here, watch out, and then throws it down on the table very aggressively. So um, didn't care for that. But uh, the cost, I'm giving like a four. I know we're at the Magic Kingdom, and I know that we, we just got to sit on the patio and watch the watch the show and everything like that, but this is still, even for the Magic Kingdom, for what we're getting, like Craig said it, Hannah said it, it's pasta. And when your spaghetti and meatballs cost like $24, but it's like spaghetti and meatball, it was, it's not like, you know, is Gordon Ramsay back here yelling at somebody, making them cry? Is that what I'm paying for? Like, I don't, it, it, so I, I just feel like it was priced a little bit higher. Um, than uh, I'd really like, but I am also very frugal, But and I know that we're paying for like prime real estate here. Um, so that's where I get it. Uh, character interaction, zero. Didn't see a single character. <laughs> I'll tell that joke every time, even if it gets zero laughs. Anyway, so that, that, that for me is a 30.5 out of five, which is a, which is a three out of five, which is pretty good. I, like I said, I had never been here before, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if this meal I'm going to be like running to come back here, but like, like we've already talked about repeatedly, repeatedly. If I, if one day we just came in and we were like, you know what, the weather's great, and you know, let's just like be have one of those treat yourself days. Like I would come in here, I would order that garlic bread, and I would do what the table next to us did. And I, I'm glad they left because I didn't want to talk about them while they were still here. But there were two gentlemen sitting next to us who ordered a whole bottle of Prosecco, and it has been chilling in a bucket, and they have just been dining and enjoying that the whole time, and they watched the parade and everything, and I was like, man, they had the right That's idea. Living. Yeah, that is living. That is Magic Kingdom living. That's bougie right there. So, I, you know what? And I'm kind of jealous. So I think someday I kind of want to do that. So that's, that's in my dreams. 
So I'm glad I got to come here. Thank you for inviting me along. Hey, Anna. All right, so time for my dining review. And I have to be honest, before I give these numbers, I feel kind of bad because when I totaled it up, my number came out kind of low. And I feel like I actually enjoyed it more than that number reflects. Uh, so my husband's actually, this is one of the few restaurants at Disney that we, he's never been to before. So I, we're definitely going to come back. And I will definitely time it again where we get to watch the parade. Especially with kids, that's a win-win. You can sit here, relax, have a glass of wine. Your kid can enjoy the parade. That's awesome. That is Disney magic. So I know that we'll definitely be back for that. I will definitely be thinking about that bread dipped in cheese for a long time to come. And I bet I'm back in the next 30 to 60 days eating that. So it, I will say my review should be higher. But digging right in, my ambiance, I gave it a five simply because I think this area of the restaurant is fantastic because you... It's one of the few restaurants where you are kind of just immersed in the park and it's right here on Main Street where you get that great Main Street loop music. We saw the parade earlier. Uh, the train is going by. It is quintessential Disney. It also reminds me of something you would find maybe more at Disneyland, like a Carnation Cafe type setup. I almost wish there was more of that feeling, like maybe even more outdoor seating. It is getting hot today, which is shocking because it's January. They do have ceiling fans, so maybe, I don't know though. Does, is that enough to help in August? Turn them on. I don't, <laughs> I don't think so, but uh, Martini Mama's sweating a little bit over here, okay? But food preparation and presentation, I'm gonna give it a six, and maybe that should have been higher because I do feel like the uh, the appetizers especially, they went above and beyond where I wasn't expecting. Like the way that they stacked the bread and did uh, the pairing of the tomato sauce with the mozzarella sticks, that is a little bit extra that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Quality of taste for the food, I gave it a five. And actually I feel like that's a little bit harsh because other than the desserts, there wasn't anything that I didn't like. I, I just think, again, it's one of those, and Rhino, you kind of said it, where you're weighing the price points with, well, okay, I'm at Disney, I'm sitting on Main Street, so I get it. But I mean, the pasta that I had while it was good, I, I can't believe I'm even about to say this. Was it better than Olive Garden? I don't know, maybe not. But I'm also humble, so take that with a, a literal grain of salt. Service, I'm gonna give it a six, and dang, I'm feeling bad about this one too, because our server was pretty good. But there were a couple times where you're like, yeah. we'd ask for like the Parmesan cheese a couple times, and and that's also, okay, so I'm now I'm feeling confident. I'm hyping myself back up on this review with the um, quality of taste, because I feel like if you are having to wait on red pepper and Parmesan to eat your dish, that's a sign, you know? Like if you have to have those elements, to take it to that next level. Like, I feel like it's one of those things like good food you shouldn't have to add salt and pepper to. So anyways, I'm feeling confident again. And, and then, yeah, that food runner just basically like, I mean, he like threw the plates on the table. Coming in. Yeah, I mean, it was just like, is the plate hot? Like what's, what's happening here? I had to like, you know, get out of the way, but I was hungry, so I wanted it. And then let's see here for cost, I'm gonna give it a six. Cause I feel like, even though, I mean, I paid over $20 for pasta with no meats. Yeah, that's a lot of money. But again, we're at Disney World. I have had worse values eating at Disney than that. Um, so I, I feel okay about that. Character interaction, zero. So my total comes to a 2.8 or a 28. But I'm still going to come here again. I So I, I don't even know what you do with that. But I will say one other thing about the ambiance. I just wish they, and maybe... This is just me. I wish they would just take the theming over the top a little bit more. Like, Lady of the Trip is a great classic movie. Where's the music from it? Where's the music? Where's the romance? Where's the guy serenading, you know, Lady of the Tramp? What's his name? Tony. Tony is his name. Walked right in that. I've been singing This Is The Night all morning. Mm -hmm. And it was it the night? No, it was the afternoon. It was. But he could have sang that. That would have been fun. I would have enjoyed that. So I, I think that would take this place to the next level. So I feel a little bit bad about my 2.8. And like I said, maybe don't even listen to me because I'm going to come back and eat that cheesy bread. Cheesy bread. We're going to spend a lot of time here talking about the ambiance outside. And all I'll say on that is, yeah, it's cool sitting here and seeing Magic Kingdom. But I feel like this is one of the worst parts of Magic Kingdom to see because you see usually like families fighting and angry as they're leaving or they're like 
rushing to get in and it's just, I don't know it's kind of frenetic in this area of town square so uh, I, I would much prefer like a hub seating area when you're having a hot dog at Casey's or sitting having ice cream outside of the plaza area that's that's more my my atmosphere I want to hang out in not town square uh, and then inside the restaurant I think if you're by the fountain that's a nice spot to be sitting you know you get a little bit more of that Italian feel uh, the next room over to us is the sunroom and I say that because the sun shines through and that thing heats up like a sauna as well so uh, I'm gonna just say five overall it's not my favorite restaurant here in terms of the, the atmosphere you get for food prep and presentation I'm giving it a seven because I thought the appetizers were very well plated I thought the desserts were well plated and I thought, for the most part, the pasta dishes were also well plated. The only way to make them fancier is cut down on the portions, get a little bit creative with uh, the the plating on there. But it, you know, it wasn't like it was just slop thrown in a bowl. Like there was there was a finesse to it. There was they, they made sure that the sauce wasn't going everywhere. So I, I was I'm happy with the prep of it uh, for quality and taste though five uh, the appetizers were the high and then everything else just needed help and the desserts were probably the low part of it so uh, the it would be a lot worse score if we didn't have solid appetizers uh, service I'm giving it an eight because I do think that for the most part everything went fine minus what was already discussed the food running situation was a little a little too aggressive and there was a couple like waiting moments that yeah, there was some difficult people around us. I'm just going to say that. I don't blame our server for it. She actually explained what was taking so long in situations, so I don't fault her for that. But at the same time, too, it's, you know, it had to be reflected in this way. And then for a cost, I'm going to give it a five. You know, it's aggressive for Italian food to cost this much, but at the same time, I just, I, I feel like we're constantly surprised at how Disney's trying to rip us off with some of these prices. So I'm just going to settle in at a five, accept it, and be like, you know what? Appetizer's worth it, and uh, let's leave it at that. But that brings me to 30 out of 50, a three out of five, and, you know, I don't know if Hannah's more correct or if Rhino and I are more correct, but it's definitely right right in that area some people are going to love this place some people are going to hate it you just got to try it yourself and see how you feel about it that's it for this disney dining review i hope you enjoyed it if you did you want to support us book a vacation through dreams unlimited travel get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com and of course you can always support us by becoming a patreon supporter getting exclusive content so do that at patreon.com slash if you're watching this on youtube hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel leave comments questions video suggestions in the comment section and if you're listening to this subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and if you can leave us fun ratings and reviews please take the time to do so. That's it for this Disney dining review, though. We'll see you again next time. We're eating our way around Walt Disney World. Uh, take care. Bye-bye. Stay hungry. Yummy, yummy.